in the lobby of Ramsey Solutions. Stephen's with us. Hey, Stephen, welcome to the Dave Ramsey Show. How's it going, Dave? Better than I deserve, man. Where do you live? Austin, Texas. Cool. Welcome to Nashville. And all the way up here to do a debt-free scream. Yes, sir. Very cool. And so how much have you paid off? 75000 in four years. 75000 in four years. And your range of income during that time? Uh, starting at twenty and uh, about 100 now. Wow. Nice jump. What do you do for a living? I'm a full-time personal trainer. Okay, cool. And what kind of debt was the 75000 Oh, man. Uh, student loans mainly, um, engagement ring, uh, oral surgery, credit card, motorcycle. Wow. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> cool. An engagement ring you borrowed on, but she's not here. When are you getting married? Uh, we uh, married and divorced within three months. So, oh, yeah. Ouch. Sorry yeah. I brought it up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, you said engagement ring. You opened the door. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. So, what kind of, so, in, let's see, mar- motorcycle, engagement ring, what else? Student loans. Student loans. Okay. What else? Uh, oral surgery. Oral surgery. Okay. Wow. Yeah. A little bit of everything here. Okay, cool. And four years from 20000 to 100000 So, tell me your story. Tell me what happened. Uh, four years ago, um, summer of 2014, I was uh, staying with my buddy Sledge, who's uh, my small group leader and a uh, big cheerleader during the process. Um, he showed me a YouTube video of uh, you live in Dallas many years ago, um, doing the whole baby steps outline. And um, I'll never forget when you were talking about how the um, Bible says to deliver yourself from the hand of the hunter mm-hmm. and uh, the, the, the imagery of the cheetah and... I just remember you screaming at the top of your lungs to run as fast as you can because the thing wants to eat you. And, and I just, I got, I got super emotional and it was the first time I felt no one's ever told me how serious this was and that I could do it. And it was the first time I felt hope. Cool. Very cool. Yeah. So that got you in gear. You decided to get out of debt. Then tell me what happened. Uh, well, my income was super tiny. I was in college. I was just starting to do personal training. Mm -hmm. Um, and I just, you know, I clogged along. I got rid of, got rid of some small, small ones first. Got out of the collections process, and then um, feel like I wasn't too long. I was, uh, I was uh, up to my student loans, which is the big pile. And um, uh, three years ago, as of this past Friday, I was on my way home on my, on my motorcycle, and uh, I was T-boned by a drunk driver um, on my motorcycle, uh, and uh, I lost my right foot. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it was kind of a, um, you know, uh, time to really refocus and uh, take a hard look at my life, you know, and just got really serious. And, um, yeah. Wow. So there's a period of this four years when you didn't pay off any debt because you were convalescing. You were um, getting used to the prosthetic leg. You're, uh, reha- you know, you're grieving, you're rehabbing your mind and your body, right? Yeah, um, I mean, I... Like was, how, how long were you down? Maybe a year? No, um, I was walking in two months, and uh, I've been a power lifter for 15 years, and that was a big goal, is to get back into the gym. And four months after I lost my foot, I was deadlifting over 400 pounds again. Whoa! Uh, and, and yeah, it was just like, you know, how, how close can I get to those numbers I used to hit? And... Um, um, about a year after that, I was deadlifting 500 and competing in strongman competitions against non-amputees and placing and going to nationals and just, uh, yeah, I was just like, I was just on fire about like how much I could accomplish with a missing limb, you know? Wow. That's rowdy. That's <laughs> rowdy, man. Good for you. Thank you. Good for you. So it makes the story extra poignant. Yeah. It's cool to win a strongman competition. It's really cool to win it against non-amputees, right? Yeah, that was, that was wild. I was, um... I, I knew I was pretty pretty strong going into it, but it was it was surreal, you know. It was like, um, yeah, uh, the um, quote that's meant a lot to me through this is a uh, by uh, Viktor Frankl, who survived the Nazi death camps, and um, says, uh, "You can take everything from a man, but one thing: um, the last of the human freedoms to choose your attitude in any given circumstance." Mm-hmm. Search for meaning. That's a good I, book. Yeah. It's a good book. Oh, wow. Very good. Cool. Okay. So, man, this is, that's, that's inspiring. What an amazing story. After the accident, accident, how long was your pity party? 
<laughs> it was uh it was intermittent um but uh i mean maybe maybe a few months of you know the 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 worst part was going from fairly busy to i'm staying at my mom's uh can't go anywhere in the day my driving foot's gone so i'm just like i can't go anywhere uh, except uh, some friends uh taxi me around good friends of mine helped me get around but for the most part i had all this downtime to think about it i was still in a lot of pain the the drugs were awful and um there was you know there was a lot of time to think about things and i i drove a whole time between reading good books mm -hmm. and and uh so how long did you, know, you take off on your get out of debt thing because obviously accident you push pause yeah. And, uh, and and you focus on recovery from the accident, and then at some point you pushed play again on your get out of debt. So what was the gap? So I had this small, um, so the guy was un uninsured, but I had this small uninsured motorist uh, uh, tack on to my motorcycle insurance, and that gave me about 18000 to, like, it was a little more than that, but I used some of it to pay for uh, medical stuff, and then there was mm -hmm. 18000 left over where I was like, huh. You know, half of these student loans, and so I just I threw out all that at it. So really, it was as soon as I got that check, you know, game on. I threw that right on there, and then um, the people at the gym I worked at um, were training my clients while I was down, and I was still being paid. Wow. Yeah, and they they did a powerlifting meet fundraiser and handed me a an envelope full of cash, and and so it didn't really stop much. You know, that that really actually increased it a bit just that for that insurance check and the money they gave me and a uh, GoFundMe that my mom set up and uh and so it you know probably about twenty thousand dollars accelerated it and then business picked up you know between then and now business has picked up massively and so it i mean that's really when it accelerated mm -hmm. wow you got a great story to tell to take on clients yes sir and so it's uh get, having a testimony is a wonderful thing getting one's a pain in the butt <laughs> Yeah. 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 So well done, man. Very Thanks. well done. You have you're an overcomer without a doubt. So we know where the motorcycle went. It got uh sold for insurance. It was totaled, I'm sure. A little bit. And uh the guy had no insurance, huh? Yeah, it was a hit and run. Um Oh, you don't even know who he is, huh? Well, I, I do. I uh oh, they found... they caught him and okay. uh last year I testified against him and he's going to prison for eight years but before, Wow. Yeah. yeah. Ouch, ouch. Well and get him off the road. Yeah. Yes, sir. Oh my gosh unbelievable wow so what do you tell people with this uh, journey this epic saga you have been on what is the secret for getting out of debt you have to want it dave i mean you have to want it bad um you have to be disgusted and with yourself and with the situation and um taking ownership of you put yourself here disgusted with it and uh, you know it became an obsession you know and it's like like nothing is going to stop me i'm getting out of debt and I'm just, i was just so ready for the weight to be lifted off the closer i got to the finish line i was like you know how much can i cut back and put any extra business i get on top of the debt and i mean you know as a trainer i i deal with people like i i want people so badly to want their goals and to reach them but like you said i'm you can lead a horse to water but you can't make him drink and i can want it for him and i can give them all the tools and and Unfortunately, sometimes they, they don't want it as bad as I want it for them. And mm -hmm. it's, it's like, I'm sure you talk to people who the same thing. They have mm -hmm. to want it bad enough to decide, I'm doing this. Yeah, I don't talk long to them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well done, man. Thanks, Dave. Steve in Austin, Texas. Got a copy of Chris Hogan's Retire or, uh, Everyday Millionaire's book for you. You're on the way to being that. What a great story. Count it down. Let's hear your debt-free scream. Three, two, one, I'm dead free! <laughs> yeah! Love it, love it, love it. Man. Uh, and you've got an excuse that's, uh, what? Yeah, really.